When I was a young boy, little munchkin, I used to dance hula. I would love to dance hula. I'd love to do a lot of hula tradition, all of that stuff. And then I started to get into more of um, sexual movies as a boy. Then pornography was introduced to me at the age of five. And pornography really destroys your brain and it's, it's, it's damaging. It really is. So growing up, I always had sexual feelings all the time. It was like uncontrollable. And I really couldn't control it because it was just, it was just too strong. So as I continued to go to grow up more, it was in middle, uh, middle school time. I, okay. <laughs> um, during middle school time, I was, I had anger issues as a kid, really bad anger issues. Whether if it, my parents would ask me to do chores, I'd get angry because of that, because I didn't want to. Um, I had anger issues towards my dad. And it was terrible having anger towards a family member. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. It was really harmful to me and my dad. It really ruined a relationship between me and him. And I couldn't do anything. I, I didn't love him. I hated my dad. I didn't have any sorrow if he was to die or not. Like I wouldn't cry. But praise the Lord that that I can have a restored relationship with my dad now. Ugh, man. But as I continued to grow up, I started to become more suicidal. I became suicidal because I thought nobody loved me. I thought nobody cared for me. And as I continued to go on into high school, I started to date a girl. And as I was dating this girl, I was still watching um, pornography. And I was still dating her at that time. And what that did is just ruin it for me. It ruined my relationship. It made me feel insecure about my body. It made me feel just insecure, you know? I wasn't really appreciative of what I had, which was her. But she was very, she was abused. She was sexually abused and the Lord will, will love on her, I pray. So, middle school time, uh, no, not middle school, high school, my freshman year, I started to, you know, I was in that relationship, but then when we broke up, I became suicidal. And then suicide came into the picture, and I just didn't want to live anymore because, you know, some boys are just like, man, I just want to die for this girl, you know? And that's how it was for me. I was going to die. I was going to commit suicide because of a girl. Can you believe that? It's crazy. But as, as I continued on um, my, my whole high school year, I was suicidal. I wanted to die. I felt like nobody cared for me in the world. I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel secure. I just felt lonely because I didn't have loving parent. Well, I did have loving, they did love me, but their actions just didn't even show it to me, you know? It may, be, it may hurt, it's real. It was hard for me with my family. And my dad was, my, was the center of my rage and my anger because he would pick on me the most in my, in my family. And that really brought me down and made me sad because I felt like my dad didn't love me because he was picking on me. But I continued to press on continue to keep going forward 
I didn't care in the world if I would die at any time. I was just so suicidal, man. It was crazy. And throughout all my middle school and high school years, I would always hear a voice say, it's not worth it. I would always hear a voice that's, that says, it's not worth it. I would always tell people that, that were suicidal. It's not worth it killing yourself, you know? You have purpose. I would say that to people, but I didn't believe in God. I, I believed in God, but I didn't really follow Him at that time. I grew up knowing God, you know, praying, but all I knew was just God. But that's all I heard in that voice was, it's not worth it. And if you're ever suicidal or you want to commit suicide and you hear that voice, please listen to that voice. Because that could be God, that, that's God telling you that. You may not feel valuable in this world, but God, see, God sees something in you that is more valuable than, than anybody would ever see in this world. You are valuable to God. And now I see that. I see that more and more every day. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. But I'm being, I've been made perfect through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I've accepted Him as Lord and Savior. So, one night, um, I was watching pornography. After I finished, I just sat on my bed. And I was, and I asked the Lord, and I asked God, God, please give me a sign, because I was thinking to myself, what is the point of living? What was the point of it? So then, I don't know if you guys heard of TikTok. You guys heard of TikTok? <laughs> Let's go. I was on TikTok. The next morning, my whole for you page before was just sexual things. Gaming, swearing, cussing, all of that stuff. But then the next morning, my whole For You page was just full of Christian content. And I took that sign from God and I was like, I want to give my life to you. I, I want to accept you because he hears me. And I have a purpose, you know. And that's what we long for is, is purpose and love. We long for love. We can try it with people, we can try it with drugs, we can try it with with anything, but it's not going to fulfill that, that, that big gap you have in you. The only thing that can fulfill you in this life is the love of God. God really does love you, despite of what you did or what you've done. He loves you with your mistakes. He's not judging. Well, not yet. He's not judging you when you make a mistake or fall into sin. Believer or not, He loves you. And He wants all His people, everyone, to come to Him. Because He loves you. He, he sent His Son to die for you. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son. That so whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So I gave my life to the Lord. Um, the year 2021. Starting in January. And you guys may hear this a lot, but before I always thought that being a good person was how I would get to heaven, you know? I could do whatever I want, you know? I could swear, I could cuss, I can still lust, you know, do all of that. And I can be considered a good person. But no one's a good person. No one. There's no such thing as a good person. Not unless you come to Christ, though. Then you are made, you are made good, you know? He makes you white as snow. He washes you clean. But 
as you become a as you become a follower of Christ, it's not easy. It gets harder. You get pressured on by the world, even by Satan himself. Like throughout my whole walk, which hasn't even been long. Throughout my walk, it was hard. But thank God, praise the Lord, that He's got me through all of that. He's got me, He's gotten me through trials, through struggles. He's gotten me through everything. You know, I never lost faith in him. Some people, you know, most of you might have left the faith. But God wants you to come back to him. Whether if you black, uh, backslide it or you keep on making mistakes. Just confess your sins to him. He will forgive you. It says that in the Bible. It says if you confess your sins, he's just he will forgive you of your sins for God but that's what it says if you confess your sins he is just and he's he's just gonna love you but the Lord is good praise God okay I'm gonna close up the time in this park with some prayer and then we're probably going to move down the street nearer to the farmer's market and set up on a street corner again. Bring this message to some more people. Because this is the last generation on the earth. It's the last generation. And all of history has built up to this moment. What are we going to do with it? What are you going to do with the life that God's given you? So we chose to come out today to turn to give Jesus some space. Give Jesus some space in this park, some space in our life, some space in our week. Would you give Jesus some space in your life? Would you give him space in your heart, in your life, in your week, in your home? If you invite Jesus into your temporary home, he'll invite you into his eternal home. So right now I want to pray over this park. I lift up the name Jesus Christ. I lift him up in this place. And it says that the, the word of the Lord is like rain which comes down and waters the earth. And it does not return void. So when the rain comes we expect that it's going to water the crops and it's going to produce a harvest. So when the name of Jesus is lifted up. When the word of God is spoken over a place, it begins to rain spiritually. So we came out here so that it would begin to rain in this place spiritually and produce a harvest of righteousness. So Lord, I lift up Kalakaua Park to you. Lord, I lift up Hilo City to you. Lord, I ask for your kingdom to come here, for your will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven, that you would give each of us each day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we've forgiven those who trespass against us, that you would lead us not into temptation, that you would deliver us from evil. For yours, Lord, is the kingdom. Yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, so we finished up in this park. There's a little team of us. Yeah, there's a little team and a couple of people sort of milling around the area. A little crowd has grown and mills around. But we're gonna move over to the little farmer's market area. Okay. All right, so we're gonna um, sort of just move the whole thing and street preach as we move. We're gonna street preach up this street. Yeah. Head towards the farmer's market, set up okay. on the street corner near the farmer's market. Yeah. 
Cool. And then I'll anybody who wants can take a I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to walk down the street and preach as we go and then set up at a farmer's market. <laughs> All right, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We're out here this afternoon, this lovely afternoon, to declare the name of Jesus. Jesus, he's the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody can come to the Father except for through him. There is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. God's given us a name on this earth for salvation, and that name is Jesus. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died. He rose to life again to save you. Nobody else has died for your sins. Nobody else died to pay the price for you to have eternal life. And you have life on, on this earth that you were created for and eternal life as well. If you're finding that you're not satisfied in this life, it's because you weren't created for this life. Your soul can't be satisfied here because you weren't created to live here forever. We were created to be eternal. We were made by the, by the eternal God, the living God. And we were made to be eternal. And this is why we have a problem with death. You would think that death is just a completely natural thing, and yet we have a problem with it. This is because we know there's something wrong with this world. There's something wrong. It's broken. Because it used to be whole. It could only be broken if there was a time that it wasn't broken. It was whole and we were created perfect. But through rebellion, we turned away from God and sin entered the world. And through sin, death entered the world. Because death is the result of rebellion. But there's a way back to God. God didn't just give up on us. He came to the earth as the man Jesus. He died and rose to life again. He paid the price for our sins. And he's coming back to the earth soon. We're out here lifting up this name. That he's the way. He's the truth and he's the life. If you welcome Jesus into your temporary dwelling, he will invite you into his eternal dwelling. But if you reject him in your temporary dwelling and say, Jesus, I don't got time for you. There's no space in this mind, in this heart, in this week for you. My life is filled up with me, my things, and the things that I want in this world. Then he will reject you from his eternal dwelling. You wouldn't make space for him in your life, so he won't make space for you in his. Jesus is God. He's the image of the invisible God. Was it Jesus who came looking like us in our image? Or was it us who were made in his image? It says that we were made in the image of God. Jesus looks like us. And Jesus is God. There's one name that you can be saved by. It's through Jesus alone. Not through our spiritual rituals. Not through our religious ceremonies. It's through faith in the power of God. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus. There's one name you can call on. One name that will save you. His name is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And he's returning to the earth soon. It was prophesied for thousands of years that he would come to the earth to provide a way for us to know him. Before Jesus came to the earth, how did you get saved? By faith that a savior would come. When Jesus was on the earth, you had faith that the Savior had come. Now that Jesus has died, risen to life again, and is a living man in heaven, it's faith that he has come. The Savior has come. Emmanuel, God with us, God among us, not only physically present, but he's among us as then he looks like us. He came and clothed himself in a body like a man. Did you know God didn't go to all this work of putting himself into our flesh, of being whipped and crucified and dying so that we could call him the universe? He went to great lengths to be known. He went to great lengths to buy your soul, to purchase your soul from the devil. 
and he wants to be known. He has a name. His, the, the name of the Lord Most High is Yahweh, the God of the Jewish people. And he's revealed to all the nations now. All the earth knows this name Jesus. Whether as a curse or as a blessing, we know this name Jesus. Did you know people will say the name Jesus Christ as a curse? But they'll take the name Christ out of Christmas because we can't have that name being honored. It only is to be on this earth as a curse. Is that right? The name of Jesus is the name that God has given us to be saved. Jesus died and rose to life again to pay the price for your sins. He's a living man waiting in heaven now. There is no other name that you can be saved by. You are not saved by your good works. Your good works are worthless to God. They're completely worthless. If I go to a wealthy man and knock on his door and say, let me live with you. He says, no, I don't know you. Same with Jesus. You'll go to heaven and you'll say, I was a good person, let me in. He'll say, I don't know you. You didn't know me. And he will not welcome you into his eternal dwellings because you wouldn't welcome him into yours. Jesus came here to reveal the Father, to fulfill the prophecies about him that were sent ever since uh, we fell away from the Lord. Now you can look at the world and say there's evil in the world so there can't be a God. But there's good in the world. So how can we tell that evil exists except for that uh, there is a way that things should be? There is a way that things should be and we can tell that there's evil because it goes away that way, away from that way. Something has gone wrong in this good creation. This means that there is a God, but there is also a devil. There's all the goodness in this earth, but then there's all the evil. And we know there's evil because it's out of line with what we know is good. Praise the Lord. All right, there is one name under heaven to be saved. Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Did you know when Buddha died, he stayed dead? When Muhammad died, he stayed dead. But when Jesus died, he rose to life again. He's made the way for us to come to God. Nobody else has done this. Nobody else has made the way. And he lights up your life. What are you living for? What are you filling up your life with? Are you living for, t for temporary things? If you live for temporary I, things, I then you also become temporary. You are temporary. If you live for eternal things, you become eternal as well. Jesus, his hand is reaching out. He's looking for space on this earth. Would you open up some space? Open up some space in your day. Open up some space on your streets. You know, if, if I came as a famous musician, I would be honored and welcomed. I would be paid a great deal of money to come and stimulate your soul with my music. But I come and I talk about Jesus. I make space on this street for Jesus. I bring up his name here. And will he be welcomed? Will Jesus be welcomed on this earth? Will he be welcomed on this street corner? Will he be welcomed on the earth and in your life? Because if Jesus is not welcomed in your space, you will not be welcomed in his space. And his space is eternal. Our space is temporary. We hold a temporary hold on everything in this life. Our bodies, our 
We have a temporary hold on all these things. But all the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. And he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He who has been believed and been baptized will be saved. But he who has disbelieved will be condemned. You have an opportunity to be saved. A hand is reaching out to you right now. The Lord is using me to speak to you and say his hand is reaching out. And all your life, his hand has been reaching out. His hand has been reaching out trying to get you. If you'd be quiet and reach back. If you'd be quiet and listen. He wants you, but you have to give up on your own striving, on your own way, on your own efforts. And surrender yourself to him. And call out to him from that place of humility. And say, Jesus, I can't do this. I need you. You cannot get to heaven by your good works. Hallelujah. But once you get saved, once you get born again, you get a soul that is from heaven and wants to do the things of heaven. Spirit. And you no longer are doing your good works on the earth. You're doing God's works on the earth. Amen. Your good works will not earn your way to heaven. Your good works, they are filthy rags before God. Because they come from our, from our mind, our idea of what good is. But what is good? Then they come from our own strength and lead to pride. I did good. I am good. I deserve better. But those good works will not get you to heaven. It's faith in the power of God that gets you there through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And then he, once you surrender to him, he does his good works on the earth through you. When I do something good, it's not of me. When I do something good, it's not of my strength. It's of the Lord working through me. He wants your life. He wants space in it. In each city, they have stadiums. They have football fields. They have space for sports. Space for musicians. In your house, you have a space for a TV. You have a space for the words that are going to come into your house through a TV, right? But what, so what kind of space are you making in your life for eternal things? I'm going to read Psalm 91. Why are they doing that? That's so rude. It's kind of considered in a weird way. It's kind of considered in a weird way, kind of rude just to go blast out. Like, I'm not going to go out and talk about paganism or, you know, anything else. Okay. Yeah. So, well, no, I'm saying that. I just walked up and down and a lot of the business owners are saying it's kind of distracting. And well, it, it puts it's just a, it, is it puts it's a, passing away. Understandable, but it puts a very bad image on you guys if you're trying to. Not uh, my image I'm worried about. People if in. I came as me, people would accept me. I don't come as me, I come in the name of the Lord. Un understandable, but you're also in the middle of a lot of businesses All right, that have so, to deal with stuff. So if so you're going to be doing this, it's kind of rude. To he who dwells in the secret place so, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow the of the Almighty. And I'll tell you I what, I'll talk to you Lord guys about my religion, religion, which is paganism. And my fortress. Which is what your religion yeah. is basically crucified. All flesh is grass. And its beauty is like the Christian flower of the grass. The grass will wither and the flowers will fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And you literally, your Why you fill up your life with temporary things? When eternal things are available, what does it profit a man? All across the world. If he gave all the world, but what does his soul? Christianity is one of the We have one name. We've been given one name under heaven by which we can be saved. And that name is Jesus. And Jesus, he's coming back soon. And Lord, I want to lift up Hilo right now. I thank you, Jesus, for Hilo. I lift up every brick, every stone, every leaf in this place. Every, every uh, structure so, and every soul. I let them feel that you are in the house, that your eyes would turn towards it, your face would turn towards it. That you would touch this city with your love and with your presence. Look at what she's doing. She's Bring your great doing presence doing here. Bring your glory here, God. We lift you up. Now, so, Jesus, he said, effect, don't light a lamp and put it under a basket. 
bosses are kind of like annoyed by her screaming. So You have one of the most bloodiest religions ever. No, under the cross, you guys have slaughtered, slaughtered thousands of my people. No, I'm Celtic Druid, dude. That's so cool. You should follow your roots because roots is not Christianity, it's Celtic. There is no, there is absolutely zero evidence. Your Bible said that the earth was created 6,000 years ago. It's consistently, consistently, over in different ways, and you translate it in so many different ways that you end up being wrong every time. The Bible says the earth was created 6,000 years ago. It is not. It is not. You can, you can actually go through and by science, detach everything. I'm pegging. I don't believe your blessing. I have, I have science. God's giving you every month, but you're pagan. So what does science have to do with that? That's spiritual, well, right? Like, you don't want to get into spirit and everything. You've got to surrender to Jesus. No, you don't. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Then you you'll find light. Just like you might like broccoli, and but, yeah. I don't. No, I've seen so, light like, transform. I myself. But like broccoli in front of people. No, wait. I've seen so many people like broccoli. How are you guys doing? Listen, if you guys are doing good. If you have your own religion, that's really cool. But you're interrupting everybody. Of course, because it, there's eternal life, right? Eternal life matters. It's and I want to stir up people's soul and be it. like, all right, so you're worried about, like, what's in this shop? What am I going to make for dinner? When am I going to get to go to bed again? I'm worried about these temporary things, but what about eternal things? So I'm out here to be like, eternal things! What what actual science basis do you have on eternal things? I encountered anything? Jesus. The fact that we even consider that there's You know what? I've done, I've done, done LSD before, before and I've talked to Gandhi, but it doesn't make it real. It's probably a oh, You know, okay, well, I'm going to and in, in, in oh, my book, you guys. All right, can we keep going to the farmer's market? I would market? suggest go, go to oh, a place that is going to be disrupting everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can I meet you guys? Yeah, yeah, meet us, because um, I don't know how to help. Yeah, okay. Think I can have my Bible, brother? Yeah. yeah. You want to take this, too, so you guys can read? I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna need that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, though. And be, be ethical. Be moral. If you if you want to help people, go to the homeless center. You can't do it. Go out and help the homeless. Center. Then that's what, what the whole message is. I'm saying, make the space for Jesus. No, you just want to come out with a microphone and preach to people with absolutely zero. Yes, it's a temporary thing. You go to buy stuff, take it home to your house. Then, you then go and actually Personally. help people. That's not wanted. Thank go and you. help people. Go feed them. Then Jesus doesn't want your welcome. Great. Go somewhere else. Okay, but that's, this is what I'm doing. That's kind of everybody's in my name. If I was coming area. in my own name, you would receive me. Because I, I would have received you if you are you or Jesus. I don't. But I come and I, I don't say have Jesus that religion. That's not mine. But I'm saying, as a moral, ethical person, you don't go screaming. Of course I am. Your religion is temporary. This is the point of what I'm doing. You're in a temporary world, and I'm stirring people's souls. You should be disrupted. No, no one wants to hear it. No, we're based because in science. We're based in science. What I'm here for. I'm here to you, have, you have zero, zero evidence of your eternal whatever that you're trying to convince me. I'm going to keep on doing it because I bring Jesus. You're disrupting You're going to have the cops called on you eventually. That's, that's I'm trying to help you. This dude seems like a super chill, normal, able to think person. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. So I've seen entire neighborhoods transformed by this word. And my own life as well. Because my life, you know, I used to have everything that this world tells you you should have. I used to have a house that I renovated how I want, my bathroom, my kitchen. I had a spouse, children, a family, 
a dog and cat, a job in social services helping people. But I had no hope. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I had everything, but I had nothing because I had no hope. When I began to lose everything, separated from my husband, custody battle for the kids, I began losing everything that this world says that you should have to be happy. But I found Jesus. And in finding Jesus, I found hope. What are you looking to for hope? You know, you're looking, um, you have a, you're, Give up your own strength. You have to give up your own way. 
And you have to surrender and call out to him for help. Because his name means savior. He came in the image of man. The God who created all things humbled himself to become like us. To walk on the earth and suffer like us. And then humbled himself to die. He he didn't he was not killed by Roman soldiers. He was not killed by Jews. He chose to die. He chose to die for your sin. It was your sin which killed him. And he chose that death because he wanted you. He's reaching out for you. He wants you. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon you. For your thoughts are not my thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain... Really? Okay. Um, all right. I got to work tonight. Okay, can we get one So what are you thinking of? Because I drove home to the thing. I have to get you a ride somewhere. Am I coming with you? you know anyone you? here? Hmm? I know anyone here. Am I coming along? I only have room for one. Okay. One good, really one good. not good. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm not really into Who's this brother? Hanging out? I'm not into, like, yeah, he's anything just else. Person. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Maybe you'd like, hey, would you like, would you like surf or something today? I have a, I have a mess going on here. Oh, okay. <sighs> you don't know what's going on? No, I think it's walking from here. I was like, oh, what is that? <sighs> don't worry, brother. You don't have to be pressured up. What do you so, think, yeah, brother? Do you want to stay? I was walking from here. Do you stay? Here, Maybe there's a way. Fall. I work till 8.30, but maybe someone can come. Is he locked? Are you, are you locked? No. Because if you want to stay, I was, I was, I was, you know? you I was somehow, walking from here, and, and I knew yeah, something really going on here. Oh, you heard something going on? Yeah. 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 And you wanted to come check it out? Yeah, call me though. Well, I'm glad yeah. you stopped by. You gotta work. Yeah. Right. I was there. Yeah. Trying to get someone out, maybe. Just in your heart. Yeah. I mean, if I can. Uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm, I not very, I'm not I very good with talking to my grand yet, so. I'll, I'll reach out to some brothers. Maybe Elijah, too. Yeah. He, he stays out here. I'll try and find him. I'm trying to think if he can get a ride so he can keep going with you. Okay. But I think this is good, right? Yeah. Unless you want to go. Unless somebody wants to Those who will hear, who have ears to hear, will hear. I mean, I'm not gonna argue with them. I just, you know, I just want to show love. Yeah, yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. But um, if you have to go, brother, you can go. Okay. No pressure. Yeah. All I can offer is a tent. I have a tent you can stay. Yeah. I don't know about overnight. Right? I'll probably have to ask my mom because I still live with my parents. But um. But, but still, I gotta work on my papa tomorrow. Yeah. So, are you planning to head up? 
Yeah, I, I unfortunately I have to. Um, but I can get to ride with Elijah, or Elijah or okay. something. I can. I mean, maybe just trust the Lord and see. He'll get you back. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. There's always yeah. hitchhiking. No, I do it all the time. I show up and expect a ride and it shows up. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, bro. Love you, bro. Love you, too. God bless, bless you. God bless you. Okay, yeah. Okay, we'll see each other hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully come tomorrow yeah. night. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. See you in. Bring those um, that family. Okay, yeah. I'll see you. If you're going, I'll get a ride with them. Okay, what's your name? branch of the Lord been revealed. Jesus, there were prophecies made about him 700 years and more before he arrived. This was written by Isaiah the prophet 700 years before Jesus arrived on the earth. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. This is talking about Jesus 700 years before he came onto the earth. Jesus came to the earth and he looked just like us, and we dis he was despised and rejected by us, and he's still, in many places, despised and rejected. Surely, he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Would you make room in your life for Jesus? Would you make room in your day, in your week, in your heart, in your mind, 
Where is there room on the earth for him? We make room for celebrities when we invite them into our home through the TV. We make room for sports when we create stadiums for them. But will we make room for Jesus on the earth? On the earth that he created, will we make room for him? Would you make room for Jesus in your heart, in your mind, in your day, in your week? Or are you going to fill up your life with temporary things of this earth? Will your life be consumed with temporary things or with eternal things? Make room for Jesus today. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Come to the Lord today. His hand is reaching out. His hand is reaching out for you. I think here's fine. Yeah, we're out here today declaring that the Lord Most High, His name is Jesus. He's known in the man Jesus Christ. We're lifting up this name, that there's no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. There's only one name, Jesus. His name means Savior. There's nobody else who can save us, not even ourselves, not our good works. Not our meditation, not our spiritual practices, not our religious rituals, none of it. None of it has the power to save us. It's by faith in the power of God through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus, he's coming back soon. All of history has been building up to this moment. All of history has been building up to this age of the earth. But what are you filling up your life with? What are you making space for in your life? The city, it has space for sports. The city, it has space for celebrities. But do you have space for Jesus? Do you have space on the streets for Jesus? In your home for him? In your mind, in your heart for him? Make space for him. He's coming soon. Make space on this temporary earth for Jesus. And then he invites you into his eternal home. But if you reject him in this temporary space, he rejects you in his eternal space. You wouldn't welcome him into your home. So he is not going to welcome you into to his home. Our home is temporary. His home is eternal. God is known in the man Jesus. If you don't like Jesus, why would he have you into his home? You bring people into your home because they're friends or because they're family. Not just because they're good people. I could go and knock on the door of a wealthy person and say, let me in, I'm a good person. And that person will say, no, you can't come live with me. I don't know you. So you, you have to know God and be known by him. And he's made himself known in the man Jesus. It's easy to know God. He's not the universe. He's not difficult to find. He's not hiding inside of a book or inside of a building. He's alive. He's a living spirit that's been sent out into all the earth. And he's been reaching out for you. All your life he's reached out for you. All your life he's called for you. But you have to be quiet to hear it. You have to be quiet enough to hear the voice. And now he sent me here to say it. To say the hand of the Lord is reaching out for you. Jesus is calling. Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back soon and we have to be ready for him. Just like an airplane lands on an airstrip. Make room in your heart for him to land. Prepare the way of the Lord. Turn yourself towards him today. He's not hard to find. Reach back. He's already reached out to us through Jesus. The Lord has reached out. His hand is reaching out. We only have to reach back. His face is turned towards us. We only have to turn our face back towards him. But we're the ones who reject his hand. We reject Jesus. Thank you.
Jesus. Make room in your day, in your week, in your mind for Jesus, for eternal things. Don't consume all of your time, all of your energy and efforts with temporary things. If you invite Jesus into your temporary home, temporary mind, temporary life, he'll invite you into his eternal home. But you have to be loving God now. If you don't love God, you won't love his home. He won't be inviting you into his home if you don't have a love for him. Now, the God who created our five senses is himself invisible in spite of them. This is like a wall. There's a wall that blocks us from God. But he's made a door. And that door is Jesus. Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody can get to the Father except for through him. There is one way to know God. There is one name under heaven by which we can be saved. And that name is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. God went to all the trouble of putting himself into the form of man. Living on this earth, dying, going to hell and getting the keys to death and hell. And rising to life again. Not so that we could call him the universe. But so that we could know him, he's paid the price for us. He's paid the price for us to come to him. Praise the Lord. Banyan tree to give a message today. This is the farmer's market. More farmer's market. The band shell. Come on, everyone. Let's go. Here's the banyan tree. I'm gonna go set up and give a message right there. So you get to have a goal again. Um, how about right on this corner? Okay, 
so make sure that you uh, talk direct into the mic. Put it just pretty much right to your lips and talk really loud into it. And whatever direction this is facing, that's where the sound's going to go. So try and move a tiny bit now and then just to like direct the sound. my friends um, and they're out doing outreach with me today Aloha. Uh, and um, this is my friend who just got saved he's um, just recently and he's out um, sharing his testimony okay Praise God. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to set free the brokenhearted, the lost. Jesus came for that very reason. You may be broken may not feel wanted you may have a certain type of addiction or something you might have everything that, that the world has but Jesus Christ the Son of God wants you to come to him because he loves you despite what you've done or what you did he can forgive you of your sins preach I preach here today without judgment I'm not judging you for what you did or for what you do whether you're homosexual heterosexual um, a drug addict or not I don't come with condemnation or shame I come in love because that's who God is God is love and he will accept you and the only way for you to come to repentance is by the power of God. Because in the Bible, Paul says that men's wisdom cannot hold someone's faith, but only the power of God can. So if you have, I don't know, depression, anxiety, stress, broken ankle, or any type of other diseases. Jesus can heal you. Jesus Christ can heal you. God. Jesus Christ loves you. He cares for you. John 3 17 it says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So Jesus Christ didn't come to condemn you. 
He came to save you through him. So without Jesus, there is no eternal life. There is no perfect peace. Jesus Christ brings perfect peace and joy. An uncontrollable joy and love. Because you see, everyone around the world has this has this gap in their body, their this hole that 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 we long to be filled. Sometimes we do it with other people. Sometimes we go out to have sex with other people or do drugs, do alcohol, smoke weed, all of that to make the pain go away or try to try to fulfill it. You know, try to get rich, get the cars, get the girls, all of that. I tried to dream of that, but it wasn't fulfilling. The only thing that really fulfilled me is the love of God. And I don't know if you've heard it a lot, but God really does love you. He loves you. You are his creation. God didn't send his son to condemn it, but to save the world through Jesus. So Jesus Christ is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Jesus Christ can bring life to you. Maybe even he brings purpose. Praise God. Jesus is good. Hallelujah. Praise you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is king. Yes, amen. Jesus is king. For those that harden their hearts, come to God. I beg with you and I plead with you. Come to God. He can soften your heart and heart. He can take your heart of stone and give you a new heart of flesh. Christ is gentle. Jesus is gentle with you. You may have had a horrible past. A terrible kind of past. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will wipe away your past. Jesus Christ will make you a new creation when you repent and come to Him. But you can only repent when you've experienced the love of God, the power of God. Because in the Bible it says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have power. Hallelujah. Jesus is King. So whatever you've been through, no matter what you've done in your past, Jesus can forgive you. You can be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ can take away all your stains and he will make you white as snow, says the Bible. In the Bible. God's will is that none shall perish, but all come to repentance. So you see, God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Amen? He wants no one to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. But if you had a bad experience in the church, where the spirit of religion, which is a real thing, or the spirit of religion just made you feel shame, condemnation, guilt, that's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. Jesus never condemns. Jesus never brings shame or guilt. That is of the devil. The devil brings shame and guilt. Not Jesus. Jesus comes with love and acceptance. He will never leave you nor forsake you, says the Bible. When you come to Him, and you truly accept Him, He say, I'm sorry. 
truly, deeply sorry. You feel that love of God, then that will lead you to repentance. But if a judge, if you get judged, you're not going to want to come to repentance because you're like, oh man, I can't believe he said that. I don't want to come to Jesus. Right? How can we come to repentance in love? You don't ever bring shame or guilt to a child. Do you? I hope not. You don't ever make a child feel shame or guilt or condemnation. Whether they made a mistake or not. If they made a mistake, you love them. You care for them. God cares for you. We do not know the day or the hour when the Lord will, will appear to us. We don't know. never know what day he's coming back. Jesus is king. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the love for you, for your people. For even though you were on the cross, you said, Lord, forgive them for what they do. Do you not see how loving that is? Jesus could have just said, I condemn them. They're going to hell. Because of what they do. But Jesus says, forgive them for what they do. He is forgiving. He understands. He's understanding. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. Despite your mistakes, your past. The devil is going to want to bring that up all the time when you come to Jesus. He's going to want to keep on bringing up your past. Be like, man, you're a terrible person. You're terrible. God will never love you. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus is the only way. Not religion. Not going with the motions in church. You may say you go to church, but do you serve God? We've got to put down our flesh, fleshly man and let the Spirit come through us. Jesus Christ loves you unconditionally no matter what you've done or did John 8, Jesus is talking to the adulterous woman. And Jesus, it says here in the Bible, But Jesus went up, went to the mount of olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought the woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group. And said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. And the Pharisee says, Now what do you say? They were using the questions, the question as a trap in order to have a base for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and stared and started to write on the ground with his finger when they kept on questioning him. He straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. 
Again he stood down and wrote on the ground at this. Those who heard began to go away one one at a time. The older ones first until until only Jesus was left. With the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no has no one condemned you? And then she says, No, sir. And then Jesus says, Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. And in other translations it says, Go and sin no more. Do you not see that? That's the love of Jesus. He didn't condemn the woman caught in adultery. He loved her and he told her, Go and sin no more. When you come to Jesus and you see his love, and you experience his love, you're not going to want to sin anymore because of how great his love is. He has his arms wide open for you. So please, I plead with you, don't reject him. Don't reject him. Accept him because he loves you. You may be faithless, but he is faithful to you. He is faithful to forgive you of all your sins. He is so loving. And I'm sorry for whatever happened in your past, for what happened in the church. That they misrepresented Jesus. That he's judging all the time when you make a mistake. He's not. He's not judging you when you make a mistake. Don't continue in sin. You may fall into sin. He can forgive you. But when you continue to sin, you're telling God, sorry, I, I want to do this on my own. I, I love my sin. But when you have a heart for the Lord, you wouldn't want to go in sin. But when you do, when you do fall, and you make a mistake, he's not sitting there like, I can't believe he did this. You know? But Jesus says, confess your sins. Confess. If you confess our sins, he's faithful and just and forgive you and wash you clean. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus Christ loves you. He does. He does. He loves you. There's no love like the love of God. I'm not perfect. But Jesus is perfect. It was the perfect sacrifice. It was the perfect sacrifice for us so that we wouldn't have sin anymore in our lives. Praise God. Praise be your name, Lord. Jesus is asking you to come to him. Come to God. And he will love you. He doesn't hate his people. He loves his people. Did you know in the Bible, it says, Jesus is talking about the lost sheep. Jesus will leave the 99 to go find the lost one sheep. Jesus will come and find you, the lost sheep. Jesus will find you. And as it goes on in the Bible, Jesus teaching that, he says that, that there's more joy in heaven for one lost sinner who repents and turns to God than over 99 who are righteous and haven't strayed away. So if you strayed away from God, He's going to find you. He's going to come for you. 
because he wants to love you. God is a jealous God. He wants, he wants you all to himself. He wants you all to himself. cross as Jesus was ready to die on that cross Jesus said it is finished what was finished well sin he said it was finished that the wages like how he says the wages of sin is death he, he said it was finished Now, when you accept Jesus Christ, you can have a relationship with God now, through Him, through Jesus. We cannot have a relationship without Jesus. We cannot have a relationship with God without Jesus. That's why we need Him. We need Jesus. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church, you fill in a seat. Make the seat warm. So I thought a Christian, I thought a Christian was only just going to church. But it's a lot different than that. It's not filling in a seat. It's about finding and helping the lost souls and bringing them to Jesus. Because he saves, we don't save people. There's only one name that saves and it's just Jesus Christ. There's no other name that can save other than Jesus. So if you haven't accepted him into your heart or accepted him as Lord and savior, just, just give Jesus a try. You won't regret it. I'm telling you now, I don't regret it. I'm not even that old. I'm 18. I gave my life to the Lord at the age of 17. And it was the best decision that I've ever made. I have perfect peace. I have perfect joy. I have love for you guys. Because without Jesus, I couldn't love. Without God, there is no love. That's a straight fact. Without God, you cannot love. Without God, you cannot love. Mostly His love, because human definition is different from what God says. God's love is giving your life up for someone else or for others. Just like how He did on that cross. Definition is different from what God says. God's love is giving your life up for someone else or for others, just like how he did on that cross. He said, my, he said, your will, Father, not mine. It was a hard, it was pretty hard though, the last couple of months walking with him, but he was faithful. He was good. He was faithful and he got me through the storms. He got me through all the trials because he didn't, he saw, he didn't want me to put a performance on for him. Always reading my Bible, even though those, that's important. Your Bible, praying, fasting, all of that, that's important. But he, he doesn't look at you in anger when you don't read your Bible and when you don't pray. He's loving. You know? 
when you fall into sin, he doesn't want you to feel guilt or shame. He's like, come, I love you. I want to show you something different this time. I have compassion for you. He's compassionate. He's, in a, compa he's a compassionate God. He's gentle. Many people in this world is going to condemn you, you know? Me, as, as a boy, I always felt I had to do something to earn my, fa my, my family's love. Like, if I do my chores, then my mom and dad would love me. Or if I cut the grass, my, my dad would love me more, you know? But that's not the case with God. He loves you. Despite your performance for Him. You know? He doesn't want you to put on performance for Him. He loves you just for you. He loves you. He cares for you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving all these people here today, Lord. That your love is unfailing. God has an unfailing love for you. Why reject that? People in this world is going to fail you. Your money, your spouse, your family. Everyone is going to, everything and everyone is going to fail you. But God's love, unfailing love, will not fail you. Whether if you're going through stress, can I handle your kids? God is going to be right there and be like, hey, I love you. It's not like, hey, I can't believe you did that. No, he says, I love you. I'm proud of you. Keep going. I'm with you always. God is not a liar. He is not. So don't doubt that God loves you. God loves you. And He cares for you. Don't doubt it. It's an amazing love that He has. And I want to show it to you. Whether if you need prayer, a hug, we're willing not to give up some hugs. Or some prayer. I'll be willing to pray for you. If you need prayers, come on by. Whether if you have depression, anxiety, anger, or have mistakes, we can come and pray for you. Because we love you. Without God, like I said, we cannot love. Without Him, we cannot love. He is everything. He is love. He is kindness. He is peace. He is joy. He's everything that everyone longs for. Even when people don't want to admit it. People long for love, acceptance, you know, security. you God come to God before it's too late come to God before it's too late God. Jesus is a healer. He can heal your brokenness. He can heal.
anything that you think that's impossible. The Bible says nothing is impossible for God. There's nothing impossible for God. God can set free. God can set people free from cancer. Coronavirus. I had it. I had Corona. But <laughs> but by the stripes of the Lord Jesus, I was healed. I was healed. That sickness just left. Because I had my faith in His death, I could be healed. I could have died having that thing, having COVID. But by God, He took it off me. Because I knew that sickness couldn't stop Jesus. Death didn't even stop Jesus. Jesus overcame death. Hallelujah. So, there's one thing I want to leave you with you guys, leave with you for you guys is. Just come to Jesus, you know. I come to you with love and acceptance. I accept you. I want to love on you. I want to be generous and gentle. I want to see. I want to see the miracle happening. cannot stop God from loving you. Your disobedience is not going to stop God from loving you. God is going to love you. He's going to take care of you like a father should to a child. We go through trials, we go through struggles, we go through, we go through tests to see our faith in God. Hallelujah. Jesus is king, man. want you to perish. He doesn't want you to go to the, to the lake of fire.
it made for us? soul, we have a spirit, and we have a body. And our soul is what, our spirit is what's going to last. God bless you. God bless you. Our soul is the one that's being transformed. And our spirit is all it's, it's clean. Our soul is pure. But it's our it's our soul that controls our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we need that. We have to that down. We've got to put it all to the to the throne of God. We've got to put it at the feet of Jesus. we got to put the fleshly man down. And let the spirit man come out. Because the real us, the real us is in here, in this body. That's what's going to live forever. Our spirit lives forever. Our soul lives forever. And most people would think that Selling your soul is, is a thing. It's just not. You cannot sell your soul. You cannot sell something that doesn't belong to you. Our soul don't belong to us. It belongs to God. You cannot sell your soul to the, to the devil, to his demons. Because it doesn't belong to them either. God made those demons. God made the devil. Before he was the devil, his name was Lucifer. He was an angel. Disobedient, he fell from heaven. Then he became the devil, Satan. God loves you. He cares for you. He wants to see you joyful. He wants to see his children joyful, at peace. He wants all of that. He wants peace. He wants joy for you. He will accept you with your with your mistakes. Whether you made a ton of mistakes, he will forgive you. So come to Jesus. Come to him. Please don't reject him. He's so loving. He's so caring. He's like one of the best parents you could ever have in the world. He's your eternal father. He's a God. He's a God of love. In the Bible it says he's the God of love. He is love. And it says in the Bible that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not our sin. Not our mistakes. Not us getting angry for no reason. Getting irritated. Whether we fall a million times, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Jesus Christ loves you and He cares for you. He wants everyone in the world to have abundant life. In your health, in your finances, in anything. He wants to see you have abundant life. eternity in heaven. I don't want anyone to go to hell. I love you guys and I care for you. in the 
Bible that whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. So, whether if you done a lot of things, a lot of messed up things, a lot of bad things, Jesus Christ can set you free from it because He loves you and He cares for you. He can set you free. Nothing can hold down the blood of Jesus or the love of God. Not sin, not death, nothing. Jesus destroys the works of the enemy. Because he is all powerful. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. Don't lose hope. Have hope in the one that lives today, Jesus Christ. He is that hope. He is our is the one that gives us a future, not ourselves. Jesus gives us a future. Praise you, God. Hello? Oh. Possessions are empty. 
There is no satisfaction for the soul in this life. But there is a satisfaction that comes from another place. There is a satisfaction for your soul that comes down from heaven. Jesus, he's made a pathway for us. He came at everybody that we know. They live, 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 and then they die. And the next person and the next person, and this has happened to every generation before us up until this day. Everyone we know, they live, and then they die. But Jesus, he broke this pattern. He lived and lived and lived, and died and lived again. And he has never died since. He rose to life again on the third day to make a way for us. Now that pattern is broken, that pattern of death that everybody we knew had lived and died, except for Jesus, who lived, died, and rose to life. He's made a new pathway. Not the pathway that our ancestors followed, a new one. A pathway to eternal life, of freedom from death. You see, we wear this item as jewelry and put it in our houses and on our houses. That is a Roman torture device called a cross. Why are we wearing a torture device? Because it's a symbol of the defeat of death. That death has no power over us anymore. We're not afraid of death anymore. Nothing in this life can hold us back and can keep us from that eternal life once we have it. A soul of this earth wants to do the things of this earth. A soul of heaven wants to do the things of heaven. As long as you're of this earth, you want to do the things of this earth, but it won't satisfy you. But you can get born again. You can get a soul from heaven. And once you get a soul from heaven, you'll be filled up with a supernatural satisfaction that nothing in this life could have given you. And it's for this life and continues on into the next. It's a down payment. When you want to buy a house, you put in a down payment to say that you're serious about it, and then eventually you get the house. God has given us a down payment of heaven. He's given us a small taste of it when we come to him and experience his Holy Spirit. Maybe you've experienced a church service. Maybe you've looked for God unsuccessfully. But you have to experience the living God through his Holy Spirit which he sends to the earth through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Somebody had to pay the price for our sins. Because the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to eternal life. There's one way. Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way to get to the Father. Many times you'll go to a church and you won't hear this. You'll turn on your TV and you won't hear this. You'll go to school and you won't hear this. Where can you go to hear the words of eternal life? Turn your face towards Jesus and he'll speak to you. His hand is reaching out. Reach back to him. He made the first move. His first move was sending Jesus. Now it's your move. Reach back. And it's not in religion. Reach back to him. He made the first move. His first move was sending Jesus. Now it's your move, reach back. And it's not in religious ceremonies. It's not going to church on Sundays. It's meeting Jesus himself and becoming the church, becoming the temple of God. And then we become living stones. Many, they are not part of the church because they're dead. The church is alive. It's the body of God on the earth. It's speaking the words of God onto the earth and taking the actions of God onto the earth. So back to what are you filling up your life with? Is it temporary things or eternal things? What do you make room for in your life? Will you make room for Jesus in a corner of your heart? Is there a corner of your heart dedicated to some brand or some product or some celebrity? Then you understand the concept I'm talking about about opening up a corner of your heart for Jesus. Give him space in your life. Give him space in your week. Look to him and thank him sometime. Look to him and call on him for salvation. Did you know 
All year, God has sent rain all over the earth. It's rain. And we've eaten because of this rain. But what if God stopped sending the rain for one year? And we stopped eating because he no longer was sending rain. We didn't thank God when he sent the food, when he sent the rain. But we would curse him if he stopped. God is providing us with so many gifts every single day, but we don't thank him. But if he ever takes them, we'll turn and curse him. God is good. The world he created was good. But we know that there's evil. And the only way we can know that there is evil is because there was a standard of good. We know something is messed up here. We know that there's something wrong with death, which makes no sense because it's completely natural. But something seems off about it because something is off about it. We were created to be eternal. And God wants you to enter his eternal dwellings, but he wants to be welcome into your dwellings. He wants to be welcome in your heart. He wants to be welcome in your mind. Take some time for Jesus. Make some room for him. He's reaching out. He has reached out. God came to earth as a man and suffered all of the difficulties that we suffer and more. And he bore the weight of all of our sins. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. If you need peace, go to Jesus. If you have burdens, give them to Jesus. He's reaching out for you today. He wants to bear your burdens. He wants to give you peace. Don't struggle in depression anymore. Don't struggle in anxiety. Give it over to the Lord. Let Jesus transform you today. Make space in your mind, in your heart, in your life. Make space in your day for Jesus. All right, Lord. Thank you so much for Hilo. I bless every stone. I bless every blade of grass and every plant, every animal and every soul. Lord, let the light of your countenance shine down on us and be gracious to us and give us peace. We lift you up and praise you, Jesus, in this place. May every gateway to hell, by my heavenly authority, I command every gateway to hell opened up in this place to be closed in Jesus' name. Open up the windows of heaven. Let the islands hear of the glory of God. Let the coastlands and the mainlands and every land and nation hear that the Lord has bared his arm. He has showed us his face. His face is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His hand is reaching out. And we can all receive him now. We can all see him and know him. It was a plan that the Lord had to reveal himself to us. And soon he's coming to the earth. An airplane lands on, an, on a landing strip. An airplane doesn't land on a mountain. It doesn't land in a forest. It lands on an airport. Jesus, he wants to land in your life. He wants to land on this earth. But do we make space for him? Or do we crowd him out with worries, with curses, with cursing him, with cursing each other, with unforgiveness? Don't crowd Jesus out. Come to him. Call on his name. He's nearby and ready and willing to save. All right. God bless Hilo. Thank you, Lord. We just finished a couple hours of street preaching. Had a little ping out. It was, it was really good. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>